What's up guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome to part two of my baby products series. In this video, I'm going to be talking all about the popular baby products that I'm sure you have heard about, but I'm here to tell you that you might not actually need. So if you haven't seen part one of this series, go back. I will link it here and down in the description box. So you guys can see that where I'm talking all about the products that you actually need. So start there before watching this one. But in this video, I'm going to go over some of the products that we didn't reach for or find ourselves getting really the most use out of. I'm not going to call this a products I regret buying or products that are a waste of money video because I don't think that that's necessarily true. Again, these are just the things that in our personal experience we didn't necessarily reach for with our first baby or we found that we weren't really using as much as the price maybe warranted for us to be using it. Full disclaimer, this video is in no way meant to shame any moms for their product choices or even deny the usefulness of a product or bring hate to any brands that create or sell these products. I simply just want to share my unique experience and the great thing is that every family is unique and so if I mention a product here that you absolutely love, awesome. I'm so glad that that worked out for you. That's fantastic. But if there is a product that I mentioned here or a product that you can think of as a mom that you didn't necessarily use as much make sure that you comment that down below for other moms to reference as well we did that in the comment section of my last video and I know that so many found it super super helpful to kind of reference it with their registry list so would love for you guys to drop a comment below before you leave today and also make sure that you subscribe to my channel we have hit 6k it is so exciting again we're on the road to 10k so I would love for you to subscribe if you have not done that before leaving today but without further ado let's get started started. All right, so the first product that I want to talk about is one that I see often for a lot of different reasons, whether it's for mainly like the practical use of it or just for the aesthetic of it, and that is the classic Moses Basket bassinet. So it was actually my mom that gave this to us, and I'm so grateful for it. It was one of our baby shower gifts, and it was purchased for the intent of being used for Vivian's like actual bassinet in the first four months of her life. We wanted to keep her in our room right beside us in the bassinet and I also just wanted it because I thought it was super cute for pictures like would love to be able to have it to kind of track her growth over time but the thing is and I've mentioned it on this channel before she hated sleeping in that thing and it was to the point that I almost switched her out of our room at three weeks of life and into her crib because I was like I cannot do this like she just doesn't like sleeping in here we tried and practiced naps during the day and like did all these different things to make this work and and then one day we had her sleeping just in the bassinet attachment of our up a baby stroller and it was during the day and she was sleeping so soundly in it that I had this idea like I wonder if this attachment would fit into the top of the rocking stand which is by Jolly Jumper of the Moses basket and so I put this thing in and I kid you not she slept so soundly I was like I'm gonna try this in the evening as well and so I put the thing in there right beside our bed and sure enough she slept through the night and so I obviously cannot give you guys like a full like explanation of why that happened of why she hated it so much my theory is that the sides of it are really scratchy there's a lot of like holes in it it's a very open bassinet and there's a lot of other bassinets with higher walls on it maybe it's just the height of ours but it's kind of short and so all in all I feel like it didn't feel super safe to her and didn't feel very like cozy at all so coming out of the womb that's a pretty stark contrast so all in all we haven't really used that bassinet outside of the first like three weeks of her life and the whole time we used it we were hating it so it's really beautiful it's awesome to have for photos and things like that I'm glad that we have it like to kind of just have the memory of that early time but it was not something that we ended up using for sleep purposes and that's all that I have to say about that so the next product that we haven't necessarily reached for as much as we should considering how much it costs is our Baby Bjorn bouncer seat. So this seat is so beautiful. It's why I wanted it. I opted out of getting any of those like larger clunkier swings. And basically my thinking was like, I wanna have some sort of chair or baby container that I can set her in throughout the house if I need to. And so I opted for this one because I liked the fact that it did kind of have this, as they describe it, self-soothing function where if baby kind of cries or flails around, it will move in response to that. 
The thing is, it doesn't really do that. <laughs> my daughter is quite big. As you guys know, she's really long. She is like 85th percentile for weight for her age right now, but she has never cried herself to a point where she would actually get this thing moving. And even if she was, like I would be picking her up. Like I wouldn't be leaving her in the chair at that point. So I'm not really sure where this like self-soothing piece comes into it, but essentially I have just opted for putting her on the ground instead of in this chair or actually holding her or wearing her. You guys will hear me talk a lot about like the ground being the best place for your baby. They can't fall off of the ground. It allows for free range of motion. And so there have just been so many times where I've been like, I would much rather just put you on the floor. So we haven't used this as much as I thought that we would, even though it is so beautiful and lovely. And like, I'm very grateful to have it and have it as an option. But if you are wondering whether or not you should spend the like 300 plus dollars to actually buy this thing, I would probably say no. The next product that I don't think that you need to buy for your baby, especially if you're wanting to save money, is a baby swing. So this one, I know it's probably gonna be one of the more controversial ones because I know having a baby swing is so fabulous. If your baby really loves to be held and rocked, sometimes it's like the only way that you can get them to go to sleep, but you can't always be doing that. And so having a baby swing can be really lovely. Don't get me wrong. However, a lot of the guidelines that talk about baby sleep and how long they should be in these baby containers say that they shouldn't be in there for more than 15 minutes at a time. I have done longer than that before, so don't like feel like this is me like coming at you or judging you or whatever. However, if there is any way that your baby can be somewhere else, like in their bassinet or on the floor for their nap or whatever, or even baby wearing, those are probably better options than having them take that extended nap in the swing or even hang out in the swing. Cause my thing is like, if Vivian's awake, she's gonna be on her mat on the ground playing. All in all, if you were wondering if you should buy like the Mamaru or any of these things, like maybe buy something a little bit cheaper so that you can have it as an option if you really do need it, but don't spend a ton because there are better places for baby to be when they are awake or they are sleeping. The next product that I don't recommend, and this is not necessarily a specific product as much as it is like a concept of a product, but it is the nursing pillows that kind of like slide and wrap around you. This one's harder to describe. I'll try and insert a video here that shows you guys what I'm talking about. I have found that these nursing pillows in particular are really inconvenient when you are the only one around, you're holding your baby, you need to get down to eat, and you're like trying to pull this thing up towards you and like push it into yourself to wrap around your waist. First of all, I don't know how that would work in any scenario for someone that's like a little bit more plus size. So not super inclusive as a product. But the other thing is it's just like, it's so hard to get around your waist when you need to get baby down and eating that a lot of the time I've actually opted against using a nursing pillow at all and have just kind of held her up. Or I've literally grabbed a pillow like on my bed or on the couch before using that one. And that is designed for nursing. So I know that there is one that actually kind of like forms to your body and doesn't go directly around, but you can kind of move it depending on where you're sitting. Like if you're on a couch or in a chair, you're probably gonna want that pillow to lay a little bit differently to get you most comfortable with baby. So I'll link a photo of that here. I think it's called Be Huggable or something like that. Definitely something I would do for baby number two because the C or U-shaped nursing pillows just weren't really the vibe for me with this baby in particular. The next product that is super popular but you don't necessarily need to buy is a diaper pail. So this includes Diaper Genie, the Ubi, whatever other diaper pails that are specific for diapers that you are looking at right now. All you really need is a garbage can that closes and secures the scent in. So don't feel like it needs to be branded specifically for diapers. I think that that's something that I kind of got caught up in was just like, oh, you get a diaper pail for diapers, but it's just like a glorified garbage can for babies. I would say that you should look for a garbage can or some sort of system that you can press down on the bottom to lift it. That's one thing with the Ubi is that you have to actually lift the entire like top instead of just like pushing your foot down, which is hard to do when you're holding a baby or diapers or whatever. So look for one that you can push down with your foot and then look for something that you can like use your own bags for. <laughs> That's why I went with Ubi is because you didn't need to use the like Ubi diaper um, bags for the actual pail. You could just use your own garbage bags. So it, we did save a little bit of money in that regard, but we could have saved a lot more if we just got a garbage can that like I thought was cute and was 
a little bit more functional for throwing away all those diapers. The next product that I would say that you don't need to have on hand for your baby is baby powder or baby oils. So this is one that's coming out more in recent years, but basically the AAP has talked a lot about the fact that babies don't necessarily need to have baby powder on them. Talc is a ingredient in baby powders so that's not really great for them respiratory wise. And just in general, like baby skin is pretty good at like self-regenerating and there are healthier and safer alternative products that you can use. That is something that I had in our like diaper changing station just in case. I didn't necessarily know if it was gonna come up. So again, I wanted to be ready just in case, but I have not touched or opened any of those products in the almost four months that my daughter has been alive and I don't see myself going for it anytime soon. The next product is the Outlet Baby Monitor. We wanted the Outlet Monitor specifically because it was a monitor that worked with our cell phones. It ran over Wi-Fi, so we didn't have to have any like excess equipment that we could have around the house. And I'm still like on board with that. I love the fact that we don't have all of this extra product lugging around with us. Like from room to room, I can just open up my phone, turn on background noise and go and see her whenever I want. But you guys have often asked me like, oh, I see that you have the outlet. Do you love it? Like what's your experience been with it? And I think that the issue that I have with it is the fact that if anyone else other than my husband is coming to watch her, they don't have like this baby monitor that I can give them and say like, hey, just like watch this while you go down to the basement and watch a movie or whatever, like keep an eye on her. They would have to now download this app to their phones, log in with my account, and now they're leaving with the outlet monitor on their phone, like still as an app, which is a little bit strange, like still being notified whenever she's crying, like have the opportunity to watch her. And so like, sure, I could just watch them delete the app off of their phone, but like, do you see what I mean? It's just a little bit strange when you want someone else to come in other than you and your partner or you if you're a single mom or whatever that looks like so that is my only kind of hitch with it I feel like I if I could go back would probably have just done a cheaper baby monitor that maybe does have that extra piece of equipment simply because I want other people to be able to come and watch her when we need to go because we find that that can happen quite often so that is my one thing with it and the second thing is that if your Wi-Fi is not like a thousand percent on like all the time and by on I mean like fully functioning like full bars you might have some issues with it. I like to think that our Wi-Fi signal is pretty strong, but from like her bedroom to our room, sometimes it says the signal is weak and I'm like, okay, like at this point, I'm just gonna listen to hear if she cries because that's not doing it for me. So that's kind of where I stand on the outlet monitor. Do we still use it every day? Yes. Would I have made another decision if someone presented all this information to me? Probably. This next one is probably a little bit of a hot take because I know that people are very 50-50 on this one, so I'm curious to know what you guys think down in the comments, but I do not think that you need to buy a drying rack for bottles or pumping parts slash accessories. So I do use quite a few of the bottles that we have. I will oftentimes, as you guys know, collect the letdown, pour it from the Hakka or the LV or my ladybug into the Medela bottles and then transfer that and have all of these different things kind of moving around. So I'm watching like pump slash collection parts and or bottles often but i do not have the drying rack simply because our counter is not big enough to have all of these excess things on it we already do have like a drying rack slash drying system for dishes and i'm of the mind that like if the dishes that are on there are also clean and i know that the area around that drying rack is clean I am totally okay with having those bottle parts dry there as well. So there has never been a scenario where I've been like, I wish that I had this little like green turf on my counter for all of these things to be drying on. Like it just hasn't happened. If anything, I've been glad that I have like all of the dishes that I need kind of in one spot. There's less stuff on the counter. In our case, it's just not something that we've ever needed and not something that I plan on buying. The next product that is one that I think is just kind of in the like luxury, like not super expensive, but just like really nice to have zone, but is totally not necessary at all, at least in my opinion, is a wipe warmer. And I'm sure a wipe warmer is like much appreciated by your baby, but it's just not something that I've purchased. I don't really think that it's super necessary. Her wipes are the temperature that they are. If they're cold, like she'll cry just as much or as just or just as little as she would if the wipe was warm, at least in my opinion. So that is not something that we have purchased. And again, I'm not planning on purchasing anytime soon. 
along this like warming type of category of products another product that i would say that you probably don't need is a bottle warmer so i'm not exclusively formula feeding so i feel like i can't speak to this entirely I would probably say that it would be a nice thing to have if that is the case for you. But if you are planning on exclusively breastfeeding or like combo feeding your baby, I think that just using hot water is enough. The other thing that I noticed is like the first time that I gave Vivian a bottle, I needed to give it to her pretty quickly. I can't remember what the scenario was, but I know that I didn't have time to fully like sit it down into a perfectly temper controlled like pot and like allow it to warm and then test it on my wrist and do all of this stuff. It was like close to room temperature, but it wasn't necessarily warm and she took it no problem. <laughs> She's honestly just gotten used to it and we haven't had any issues with like colic or reflux or any like like vomiting or upset stomach from that temperature and so i don't know if this is like not recommended by doctors talk to your doctor because that's not me but we have been okay with not using a bottle warmer and she has been okay with it and so it's just not been something that i've wanted to have on hand for that reason for us warm water has worked very well to get that bottle to a temperature that we need it to be at for her to be happy to take the bottle this next one is one that i definitely like fell for if you could say that that's something that happens to moms with baby products but it's also one of the reasons why i say like don't shame people for what they choose to do because sometimes they just like to have something because it makes them feel good. And for me, that is too many like fancy swaddles for your baby. So this is a popular thing. You'll often see photos or like things online of babies in these really beautiful swaddles. And again, they're the ones that are not like the Velcro ones that are designed for sleep or anything like that. They're just like these beautifully wrapped newborn babies in these photos and you know that that baby only put on the swaddle to take the photo. So I love those swaddles because I like them for photos. I think they're really nice to have like throughout all of the babies that you have. They're just more of like an heirloom type item that I personally think is fun to have for that reason. However, I like know and my husband would probably like be shaking his head at me if he like heard me saying this but like you don't need it. It's really not something that you need to have on hand. Like maybe one really pretty one is good to have, but like if you're thinking that you are going to use these things like versus a sleep sack or whatever else, you probably won't. They are just really pretty and nice to have. So if you wanna save money, avoid it. If you wanna like have fun, which I totally think is okay, that is in my case, like go for it, get the pretty swaddles. But again, it is not something that I feel like you need, even though it is a really popular baby item. Okay, so this last one that I'm sharing with you guys is kind of a hot take against myself as well, because we did use it, but not as much, like certainly not as much as we should have or like still be using for like how much we spent on it. And that is the Snuggle Me Organic Baby Pillow. So I know that this is one that is raved about by so many moms. It is such a lovely thing, honestly, to have when they come home from the hospital and they're newborn if you need to set them down because the way that it's designed like kind of just snuggles them in, why it's called Snuggle Me Organic, and makes them feel like they are kind of being held or hugged into this little pillow. So lovely for that purpose, yes. Did I use it beyond four weeks of my baby's life? No. And maybe if Vivian wasn't such like a long baby, I would have gotten more use out of it. But again, I found that as soon as I got comfortable with putting her on the floor as her mom and feeling like this is a good spot for her to be, it's okay, you can release some of that pressure, it was just like where I put her and I didn't feel like I needed to have her in this pillow and I felt better about the fact that she could move her arms around and kind of explore her own body that I like just stopped using that pillow. And so I'm sure that like when we have our next newborn baby, like whenever that is, this is not me saying anything, but I'm sure that I will reach for it again for a couple of weeks, maybe even a little bit longer if that baby is smaller, but I feel like it's not something that I would have gotten if I had known that there are other ways to set her down and know that she is safe and comfortable and happy. So if you are in a tight spot, once again, and you are wondering like, do I need to have this? Like, will my baby be okay without it? Your baby will be okay without it. Don't like let all of the pressure around the snuggle me or whatever make you feel like you need to have it. I love them as a brand, love what they stand for, think it's great. Again, it's really beautiful, but it's not something that you need to have if you are 
wondering whether it's necessary or not. Well guys, I hope that this video was helpful for you or that you just simply enjoyed me sharing my experience with some of these different baby products that are honestly so popular and you hear about all the time, but maybe do not necessarily need. So if this was helpful for you, make sure that you do like it before you head out today, but do not leave without referencing the comment section because I'm sure that at some point, some mums will be going down there and sharing some information about some of the products that they didn't need or found themselves not reaching for. So if you are a mom that's able to do that, I would love for you to do that down below, help another mom out. It really is just so nice to be able to be there for each other in this stuff, especially for first time moms that are just kind of going at it on their own and maybe don't have a community to help support in that. So comment down below with the products that didn't work for you. Thank you guys so much for all of your love and support on this channel. It honestly means the world to me. And if you want more content like this about baby or about my life and marriage and all this different stuff, make sure that you do subscribe because I don't want you to miss out on any of that. And we are on the road to 10K, which is so exciting. So thank you guys so much for watching today. I love you. I'm praying for you guys and I will see you soon.